This is the story of a former police chief who is the convicted murderer and who pleads guilty to rape. This cold case was solved after 20 years. I will tell you about these twisted events, but before I go further, I really appreciate your supporting this channel. And if you like this video, hit the like button. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you will be notified of new videos. This is the story of a former police chief who pleads guilty to raping a teacher. Tyler Thomason shows us how a tragic murder just two years ago broke a case from 1997 wide open. This story begins with the murder of James Lee Appleton. James Appleton was born on November the 14th, 1957 in Miriam, Kansas. He was kind, smart, and caring. He graduated from Southwest High School in 1975. He worked for more than 27 years at Emerson Electric as a supervisor. He also worked as a carpenter for 12 years. In the 2010s, James got hired by the city and he was working at the Gateway Water Authority. That is where he died in a split second. Gateway, Arkansas, in the northwest part of the state, is home to about 400 people. It's winding two-lane roads creep near the Missouri border. Neighboring communities get even more desolate. Cows seem to outnumber people. 59-year-old James Appleton was talking on the phone with his brother-in-law, the mayor of Gateway, Arkansas. He had pulled over in his truck so he would avoid losing his cell signal. This was on February 23rd, 2017. While he was talking on the phone, a car came up next to him. Witnesses say that a man then pulled the trigger of a gun on James through the windows of their cars and then sped away. By the time the first responders got there, it was already too late to assist. James had been shot once in the face. This action started the investigation into his cold-blooded killing. It was thanks to the witnesses that a suspect was identified. Some people were surprised because of how well known he was in the area. The witness identified Grant Harding as the attacker. Heard the shot. That's when you heard the shot. A booming gunshot, followed by the discovery of a man dead in his gateway work truck. He was an awesome brother. I mean, the victim was James Appleton. He was just that type of a brother that would bend over to help anybody. Moments after the deadly shot, deputies needed help finding the suspect. A name surfaced at the scene from a witness. Did you physically see him inside the car? Yes. Who was it? His name is Grant Harden. I just know that he worked for Gateway as a okay. policeman. Who was Grant Harden? Grant Harden was a police officer for the Eureka Springs Police Department. Ex-police chief Earl Hyatt had told him that he would be fired for lying on a police report. He quit October the 4th, 1996. Records show that Grant served as a constable for District 1 from 2009 to 2010 and again from 2013 to 2014 in Benton County. In January 2016, Harden was hired as the police chief for Gateway. He quit approximately three months later. At the time of his arrest for the murder of James Appleton, Grant worked as a correctional officer at the Northwest Arkansas Community Correction Center in Fayetteville, where he later lived and worked. This is a prison for women who have been charged with nonviolent and non-sexual related crimes. It was 1995 when Grant Matthew had met his soon-to-be wife, Linda G. Harden. Grant was a police officer at the time. They fell in love and got married quickly. Their home was on Gam Ridge Road in Garfield, Arkansas. They lived a safe and happy life together for many years. Because her husband was always good to her, Linda thought he was the best person on earth. Linda Harden told the officials that on February 23rd, 2017, the day James Harden was killed near their home, that Grant was on their property the whole time. She said she could hear him through the windows. Linda said later that evening, the family then went out to eat. 
Her husband looked a little weird, but then told her that she would be fine no matter what. He said, just know I love you. God will look after you. Grant was charged with first-degree murder just a few hours after this. His wife did not believe he was guilty of any crime. Uh, he is the same this time. Hours later, Grant Hardin was in handcuffs. The same Grant Hardin who used to be Gateway's police chief and worked a polka-dotted career in law enforcement. I know you've been a police officer for a while now, so you've got, you understand. They snatched me up out there and didn't nobody told me anything. I don't understand. Grant's wife said she thought he was outside working in the yard when the crime happened. This was a big flaw in his case. In simple terms, he didn't have a solid alibi. So the 48-year-old former police officer agreed to plead guilty to first-degree murder on October 16, 2017. He didn't say why he did what he did, but some think he met James Appleton on the job at some point in the past, which led to this seemingly senseless crime. To help his victim's family deal with their pain, Grant Harden was asked again and again if he wanted to say something. It was only... I don't know how to say it, but I'm sorry. Thus, because he confessed, he got a very short 30-year prison sentence. He's certainly a very manipulative person. Nathan Smith prosecuted the case. Harden pleaded guilty to murder in exchange for a 30-year prison sentence. The twist to all of this. After his first-degree murder plan, Harden was ordered to provide a DNA sample to the state, which is a standard procedure for all convicted felons. So this is where the cold case comes in. The Arkansas Department of Correction submitted his DNA sample into a database, which then cracked a cold case and sent shockwaves through the community. It was proven to be Mr. Harden uh, beyond all scientific certainties. Harden's DNA matched the DNA preserved in a rape case from 1997 when a teacher, Amy Harrison, was sexually assaulted at Frank Tillery Elementary in Rogers on a Sunday morning as a church service was held in the cafeteria. In 1997, police say Amy Harrison, a teacher at Frank Tillery Elementary School in Rogers, Arkansas was raped while she was getting ready for the next school week. She was there approximately two hours when she went to use the bathroom in the teacher's lounge at 11.30 a.m. and found a man in the door pointing a gun at her. The police say she was then raped in the bathroom and afterward the assailant moved her to the classroom and raped her again. Amy said he was wearing a stocking cap and sunglasses but no shoes. She said he took care not to touch any surfaces. He covered her face with her pants at times, and he took her underwear from her. Police thought at the time that the men might have been trained in law enforcement. In spite of everything, the rapist left something behind. Amy said her rapist was surprised when he ejaculated, and he looked shocked. After he left, she used her hand to wipe his semen off her leg and onto her sweatshirt. Then she put them back on again. That small detail of wiping off the semen would lead to an arrest in the end. Tests for DNA were done on the victim's clothing. A John Doe warrant was used by police in 2003 when the statute of limitations was about to run out. They used DNA samples from the crime scene to do this. Police could use the person's DNA profile to arrest them even though they didn't know who they were. People who haven't been named get John Doe warrants, which are arrest warrants for people whose names are unknown. When the warrant was filed, the statute of limitations for rape in Arkansas was six years. So the case could be tried if a suspect was found. There were no witnesses who saw the attack even though there were more than 250 people at the church service in the cafeteria at the time. For 20 years, the police had never been able to find a suspect. This became a cold case. Harden pleaded guilty to the rape earlier this year. The man who worked as a police officer, a police chief, a county constable, 
and a corrections officer was now on the wrong side of the law. Grant Harden, in my view, in, in my personal experience, is uh, one of the most dangerous people uh, that I've ever seen uh, for the reason that he does not at first appear that way. Uh, he is a man capable of a seemingly uh, random horrific murder as well as a random horrific rape. That teacher from 1997, Amy Harrison, spoke to a crowd of media after learning of Harden's guilty plea. I don't know, I, I'm not sure that forgiveness is the word that I could use. I guess just um, settled. You know, he's where he needs to be, I'm where I need to be, and I will move on. The connection that solved the case. Rogers Police Chief Hayes Miner said that the DNA from the rape case was tested against both old and new profiles in the system. Investigators found a match when Grant Harden was in prison for killing Appleton. During a court hearing in February 2019, the police chief and constable agreed to plead guilty to two counts of rape. Harden 50 was able to avoid two possible life sentences by pleading guilty. Robin Green, a judge in the Benton County, sentenced Harden to 25 years on each of the rape charges, which means he got a 50-year sentence. In 2017, Harden agreed to plead guilty to murder and get 30 years in prison. By pleading guilty, Grant Harden avoided two possible life sentences. Harden will have to serve 21 years for murder and 14 years for assault before he can get out. That means he would have to serve seven years for each rape. He will be 84 years old when he can be released from prison. He is being held at the North Central Unit in Calico Rock, Arkansas, which has a low to medium level of security. Harden was the police chief of Gateway for several months and served two terms as a constable in Benton County. He worked as a police officer in Fayetteville, Huntsville, and Eureka Springs, and he had never been a suspect in the rape. Do you think he committed any of the crimes between the murder of James Appleton and the 20 years since the rape? Leave a comment below if you think so.